Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I want to take a close look at this 64-bit game system, also called the POW Kitty V90. Because I think this device needs a highlight. Is this the one of the best emulation machines out there? Absolutely not. But this thing comes with a very nice, interesting price tag. And I think where, in combination with the performance of this device, that makes this thing pretty damn cool, even now in 2021. So this is a clamshell design, a design you don't see very often, most of the time you're going to get yourself like landscape editions. But what I really love about it, not because this thing looks like a Game Boy at Advance SP, but this thing has quite interesting specifications when it comes to what it can play and what it can do and what you're going to get for the money. Because is this thing perfect? Nope, not at all. But again, this thing is cheap, and when it's cheap, Wicked likes it. Oh, I don't want to come out! Finally, and of course the toilet paper manual, the video game consoles. So this is just a product they make in China and they're relabeling it like different kinds of products like the POW Kitty. But the thing is what is, I find it a quite interesting concept. It's not unlike a powerhouse that we've seen before, like with Ember Nick models, but it's still a very interesting piece of technology. It comes with a Type-C cable for charging, so it's quite interesting because a lot of these cheap devices don't even use micro USB sometimes. But let's take a close look at the device itself. So this thing has some similarities when it comes to the Game Boy SP. But I must say like there are like a lot of things that the Game Boy doesn't have. To begin with this thing comes with a very nice display. And that is something with the normal Game Boy Advance you don't have this. And also the layout is not super special. We're going to get a D-pad. I'm a big D-pad fan so I am very pleased with this. And it got a very nice touch. Select start, A, B, X, Y and the next row button over here for having some extra options when it comes to configurations. And here at the top we're going to get two speakers and these sound pretty damn At the front we're going to get ourselves a Type-C connection for charging and data transfer. At the front we're going to get a headphone, volume control, at the top we're going to get four buttons and that is something that is quite unique especially with the cheap devices that we're going to get into total a button that we can use the on and off switch and here we're going to get the tf slot so when it comes to this device there are a lot of interesting options and at the bottom we're going to get ourselves we're going to get ourselves the then we're going to get ourselves the let's see the bl5c so let's see what kind of battery they were going to give us so this is the 1020 milliamp i think the like bigger ones don't know if the other ones are like thicker like this one otherwise you will have a problem because this haven't really a lot of space inside but when you want to bring yourself a couple of these batteries you have a lot of hours to play so when it comes to all the things that is the thing i really love about it what you can do with it and how cool it is let's turn it on out of the box, what we're going to get is the NX Hope piece of software. We have seen it before with different models, also including ones from Pow Kitty. But what you're going to get is quite interesting. So first of all, the display, which you can see, like it's got a very nice display. It's not like the super vibrant IPS display we've seen with Ambonix devices, but take consideration, this thing is really cheap. Okay, but let's take a close look at the display and what are we going to get when it comes to the emulators. Over here we're going to get ourselves the Game Boy, Game Boy Classic, Advance, Famicom, Super Famicom. So here you can see like all the 8-bit and 6-bit stuff is here and including some handhelds. Then of course we have the option to play PlayStation 1 but take consideration you will have a mixed performance that I will show you. Let's go to the next page. This is the part that I personally really love about the open Dinguk scene. You have so many cool things like homebrew, the homebrews, the homebrew games are like, oh man, I love these homebrew games. And there are so many out there and still like a very living community bringing out a lot of cool things. So let's think about the old school, let's say games like Open Terrarian, Quake 1 that you play on the PC. Then the last menu over here, we're going to get settings. You can change that to skin if you find it a little bit boring. And of course, if you want to be the guy that watches a video or listen to music, it's even possible. So this thing is quite interesting, but it is purely made for gaming, if you ask me. Okay, so next up, let's play a game. First, we're beginning with the 16-bit stuff. And the fun fact that like Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, it doesn't run really great on many of the cheap devices. But with this piece of software, it runs amazing. And with some new software, we can even get some better improvements if you need this. Okay, so the sound itself is great. When you're pressing this middle button over there, what you're going to get, here you can see like we're going to get this menu. And with this menu, you can see like we can make quit load, quit save. You can change stuff, controls, and even mess around with emulator. It's pretty cool. Stuff you didn't have with a lot of cheap devices. Okay, so a great example is like with Mega Drive's Genesis. What you're going to get with these devices, that we have a lot of issues. 
but when it comes to the gameplay on the device, it's just crazy good. Of course the display itself has a great expense ratio, so we can just actually play the games that I really enjoyed. And I still play on original systems, but if you just want to bring it with you, this is just a very easy way to go. And the emulation is pretty damn good. Especially when you try this part of the game. A lot of these cheap devices have a problem with it. So, it's a very nice. Alright, so next up, let's play a little bit of Moss System. And here you can just try out the D-pad. You can see like with a game like this, it works perfectly. Navigating through the game, it's just a lot of fun. I know, like when it comes to the D-pad, I'm always bitching about it. Because most of the time they just mess it up and it completely ruins the fun. And some of the handheld do have like a decent analog stick, but we don't have an analog stick, so they need to make it right. Another great example is Donkey Kong Country 2. The system, like the X6 or the cheap device we've seen before, they just messed it up, like I did with this gameplay. But they, like most of the time the game doesn't run that well. We have all the buttons that we need for playing this game. If you want to mess around with the settings, just press the menu button. You can make a quick load, quick save again, and you're ready to go. No, I'm not going to fall for the second for the second freaking time. Okay, so next up, let's try PlayStation One because this is the system where this is, where basically like you're pushing this to the next level. But take in consideration like. Even this game tips to 50, 56 frames per second, it's still playable. And when you're going to get into the two-dimensional stuff, it's even going to give you like better performance. So take consideration that some of these games will run like horrible, especially with the full 3D games. But a game like Contra will run just fine. If you can live with the frame drops. I'm going to get shot by everybody. Leave me alone! Okay, so next up, let's try a game of the homebrew list. And I'm gonna say that it's a quite interesting title, Quake. How cool is it that you can play this game actually on the go? If I was telling myself like 10 years ago, when I'm going back in time, saying like, hey, over so, let's say 15 years now, you can play this game on your freaking, let's say, Chinese handheld, I won't believe myself. Like, this is crazy if you think about it. But you can see, like, these are like demo games. So actually you cannot play a lot. But Quake 1 looks pretty damn good. Okay, so next up let's try Street of Age Remake. And for the people who are familiar with the game, you will see this game runs it slightly slower. And you can see the gears where this device will struggle. Maybe with some software tweaking in the future, with some better software you can improve this. But overall the performance are not bad at all. I can still really enjoy this game, even just slightly being on slow motion. And it looks amazing. And it sounds awesome. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to make a video about this product in 2021 is quite simple. I think this is still one of the best options if you want to like game on the budget. Because this device has so much to offer. Especially when you're looking at the price in combination with the quality. So the screen, it's not perfect. You're still going to get a bezel. But the display what you're going to get is actually quite good. Another thing that I really love about it are the controls. The D-pad is amazing, I'm a big fan of it. If you want to play some fighting games, Street of Rage, like in Beat 'em Up, this is the stuff that we need to have. And this is the thing that I really love about it. So, and still we're going to get all the buttons that we're going to need. This bloody thing got us freaking two speakers. Something that most of these cheap devices don't have. Look at my X-Series handhelds, like always going to get mono, spawned and horrible emulation. But this thing, not bad at all. And I'm very pleased with it. So another thing I also like is the clamshell design. Something you don't see very often now anymore. Like most of them are going to give you like a landscape or you're going to get a handout that's basically the size like this that you need to play it in this way. But overall like it's not super comfortable. Don't get me wrong like there's not like the most comfortable device to play. But in overall I'm pleased with this. Getting even four shoulder buttons. So for the PlayStation game that need it you will have all the buttons. Replaceable battery and this thing has a lot of to offer in my opinion. Let me know what you think of this and what I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family and I will see you in the next video.